I think one of the things that really gets missed in conversations around the gender wage gap um, is the fact that many women are not in the traditional labor market. It actually uh, has a somewhat unintended consequence of devaluing the work that women do in the home and devaluing what we perceive right now still as predominantly women's work. So I'm working right now with GATE on a project that's investigating the sources of the gender wage gap. A lot of research that has come out recently in Scandinavia and in other areas around the world has focused a lot on the effect of the motherhood penalty. The gender wage gap starts to increase a lot after the birth of the first child. And so one of the things that we are interested in looking at is how women change their the firms they're working for, the organizations they're working for, or how they actually change sectors or even uh, occupations altogether after the birth of a first child, when they do that um, and where they move, and whether those organizations that they move to have different kinds of uh, family-friendly practices or work-family balance practices that allow them to be able to balance the demands of work and family. Um, and one of the challenges associated with all of the policy around these areas is that we often don't think about people who are actually always excluded from the traditional labor market or who for a variety of reasons because of child care or elder care responsibilities or because they volunteer um, extensively in the community. Most of these kinds of roles generally do fall to women as well. So some of these policy interventions focus predominantly on the labor market can exclude a large proportion of women who aren't actually in the traditional labor market and may not be. So another policy option that I've been thinking a lot about and doing some research on is a basic income guarantee. And a basic income guarantee is, is one way of addressing things like poverty, um, income security for Canadians that might lose their jobs due to automation or uh, because they're between jobs. Um, unemployment insurance has been a way that we've addressed this in the past. But a basic income can also provide compensation for people who are doing really socially valuable activities in society that we don't want people to stop doing, um, but can provide them some compensation for those activities. actually though doesn't really fit with what I said Brian this is why I have too many areas of research <laughs> I have like no idea how to bring it together That's we'll see fine. if we can figure it out <laughs> we'll figure it out